All right, next up in our D&D 101 series, we're going to break down the character sheet for Dungeons & Dragons. Welcome back to Fits the Game, your source for news, reviews, and how-tos for Dungeons & Dragons. Today we're going to break down the character sheet for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. You can download the character sheet as a free PDF download from the Wizards of the Coast website. I'll throw the link in the description below. When you download the basic character sheet, not only do you get the original basic, basic character sheet, but you also get a few different versions. I'm just going to go ahead and stick to the original version that they released for 5th edition. Um, it looks like this right here. So I'll start with the area across the top. This is where you're going to put your character's name, your class, your race, your background, your alignment, your player's name so you don't lose track of whose sheet is whose, and your experience points. Okay, next we're going to jump over to the left side of the sheet where we'll find your ability scores. The ability scores define your character's physical and mental Abilities. Okay, so for your ability scores, all you really need to know for now, for the sake of this video, is that you're going to generate a number. How you generate it is going to change, but we're going to get to that in the ability score video. But basically, you're going to take a number, you're going to look up another number on, number on a table based on that number, and that second number is going to be your ability score. It's going to be something like a plus one or a plus two, it could be a negative one, um, but don't worry about all that, we'll get to that later. Okay, next we're going to move on to the Inspiration and Proficiency section. Inspiration is granted to you by the Dungeon Master. Uh, whenever you're doing a really good job of role-playing your character, playing to their strengths or their weaknesses, the, a Dungeon Master will give you Inspiration, which is a point that you can spend at a time of your choosing to re-roll a die to try and change an outcome. Quick note, it's a good idea to check with your Dungeon Master about Inspiration. Some DMs may not play with Inspiration, and others may limit what you can use Inspiration with, or they may even go beyond what the rules say and allow it for more things. But it's good to have that conversation before you start making assumptions. Proficiency is a bonus you get to add to certain skills, attacks, or saves. Your proficiency bonus will increase as you level up. What your bonus is equal to can be found in the proficiency bonus column of the class table for the class that you chose to play. All right, next we have saving throws. Saving throws are made to try and counteract the effects of different type of magics, attacks, or poisons. When you're asked to make a saving throw, you're gonna roll a d20 and you're gonna add the bonus beside the particular type of saving throw that you're trying to make. Uh, you'll notice these small bubbles here. Uh, these are bubbles that you shade in. You'll get to choose from two of these defined by your class of what type of saving throws you are proficient in. So whatever your base bonus is will go in here and then your proficiency bonus will be added to it. So if your base bonus is a plus two and your proficiency is plus two, whenever you make that particular type of saving throw, you'll get a plus four because you get to add those together. Now don't be too bogged down by that. Um, like I said, I'm going to explain all of these things in more depth in different videos, but just for this character sheet video, that's really kind of all you need to know that you're going to be calculating numbers here. Okay, up next we have skills. This is a list of checks that you're going to make as you play the game. As you try and interact with the world or the world is affecting you, whenever you try to do something, it's usually going to be one of these skill checks that you're going to have to try and make. These skills are all based off your bonuses from your ability scores. You're going to take those bonuses and plug them in beside each one. So if it's listed as a strength bonus, you're going to put your base strength bonus in the blank beside the text. But you'll also notice that there's bubbles here too. Based on your class and your background, you're going to get a certain number of these skills that you're proficient in. Um, and you can just shade that in and that just lets you know that you add your proficiency bonus to that number. And as you level up, your proficiency will go up and that number will go up as well. And you'll notice tucked down below all this, there's a little section that says Passive Perception. Passive Perception is 10 plus your Wisdom modifier. What your Passive Perception is, is the ability to notice things going on in the world around you without having to pay attention. So it's basically how in tune you are with your environment as you adventure through the world. Your DM will use that Passive Perception sometimes if there's something happening in a room or an area that you're in that you're not actually supposed to know about, but you might notice because your score is pretty high. Or you might not notice because your score is pretty low. 
Moving down the character sheet, we have the section for your other proficiencies and your languages. This is an area to mark down the languages that you know and other things that you're proficient in. This is the sort of things like armor, shields, weapons, tools, that sort of stuff. Other things you can add your bonus to um, when you're using them or interacting with them. Um, but as far as armor and shields go, the proficiency in armor and shields kind of define what you can and cannot wear as a character. Um, so if you're not proficient in something, you'll have disadvantages or you might not be able to use it at all. Uh, you won't be effective in combat using those things that you're not proficient in. Okay, now jumping back up to the top of the character sheet in the center, you have your armor class, which is basically a number for how tough your character is. Your armor class defines if how hard it is for a creature or a foe to hit you when they attack. So the DM will roll an attack roll, or you will roll an attack roll on your foe, and that d20 roll plus your bonuses has to be equal to or greater than your AC listed. So if your AC is 15, someone needs to roll a 15 bonuses included to hit you. Beside AC is your initiative bonus. The initiative bonus is based off your dexterity, so it's just basically whatever your dexterity bonus is, we'll just plug into here. Uh, initiative will be used for whenever you get into combat, you will roll initiative, you will roll a d20 and add this number, and then that defi will define your order in combat based on everyone else's rolls. And then next to initiative we have speed. Speed will be how far you can move in one round of combat. Speed, it's kind of tricky to understand at first, but if you look at it, it'll be listed in feet. Most characters have 30 feet of movement, um, so your speed is 30 feet. So you can move uh, up to 30 feet per round of combat. One round of combat being 6 seconds, so in 6 seconds you're able to run 30 feet. That's how fast you are. And just below those are your hit points section. You have your maximum hit points, which will be calculated as you level up. We'll get into that in another video. And then below that will be your current hit points. This is the track as you take damage in combat, where, uh, what your current hit points are sitting at. So you can just kind of, you'll do a lot of erasing in this section. So make sure you fill it out with a pencil, not with a pen. Below that, we have temporary hit points. Temporary hit points are granted to you by certain effects or magic. Uh, temporary hit points are a pool of hit points that you can you, you have above and beyond your maximum or current hit points. Um, so this can go above. If you have 50 maximum hit points and you get 10 temporary hit points, you now have 60 hit points total. It'll go above and beyond your max. And whenever you take damage, you take from the temporary hit points pool first, and then you start subtracting your current hit points. Okay, next we have hit dice. Hit dice are dice that you can roll to gain back some hit points while you're taking a short rest. A short rest being one to eight hours, and a long rest being eight hours or above. Whenever you do a long rest, you just get all your hit points back. But whenever you do a short rest, if you only have a short amount of time uh, while you're playing, you can roll these hit die. The hit die is defined by your class. It's different for each class, and you gain a hit die for every level you have in that class. So if you're a fifth level cleric, you have a D8 as your hit die, so that's the dice you're gonna roll and add your constitution bonus to, and that'll be the amount of hit points that you gain back. Um, so if you're a fifth level cleric, you'll have five D8 hit dice. So you can use as many of those hit dice as you want whenever you rest. If you've only taken a little bit of damage, you can roll just one hit die. If you've taken a lot of damage, you can roll all five if you're that fifth level cleric. Okay, next to your hit dice, you'll find death saves. Whenever you drop to zero hit points or below, you become unconscious, and every round of combat, you'll have to make a death save. To make a death save, you'll roll a d20. If you get a 10 or higher on the roll, you will get a success. If you get below a 10, you're going to get a failure. If you get three successes, you're stabilized and you're no longer dying. You're just unconscious on the battlefield. If you get three failures, you are officially dead. Rip up that character sheet. You're gone. Time to roll a new one. One thing to note, if you take enough damage to go so far down that you're equal to the negative of your maximum health, then you are instantly dead. 
So if you have 20 hit points to start with and you take 40 damage, you go down to zero, plus you have enough to take you back down to a negative 20, you are dead. There's no death saves made. You're just gone. You're smushed on the sidewalk. Okay, next we have the attacks and spellcasting section. This is where you put the type of weapon that you're using, the attack bonus you get for using it, it's defined by the type of weapon that it is, and then we have your damage for the weapon. Under your weapon section, you're gonna have the area for spellcasting. This is where you can list the type of uh, cantrips that you have, or uh, what level spells you have, or how many spell slots you have. It's just kind of a quick reference on your main sheet um, so you can know what your spell casting is offhand without having to flip the pages. Below this you have an area for your equipment. Your equipment is all the stuff that you carry with you as you adventure through the world, your adventuring gear, plus the money that you have as well. Moving over to the far right hand side of the sheet, we have your character's personality. This is your personality traits, your ideals, your bonds, and your flaws. You roll these up based on the background that you choose for your character. There's charts in the background section, but you can also make these up if you want. Um, this kind of defines your character and their personality. This is the stuff that you'll use to role play your character and gain those points of inspiration that I talked about earlier. And then below that, the last section on the first page of the character sheet are your features and your traits. These are features and abilities that you gain by your class or your race um, above and beyond what there is space for on the character sheet. So for instance, if you're able to see in the dark, you have dark vision. This is where you can jot that down with the number of feet that you're able to see in the dark as well. Or any other thing like that that is not really defined by the rest of this first page but that you want to keep on hand and just kind of have short notes or long notes if you want about so you can kind of look at them at a glance and know what you have available to you moving on to page two of the character sheet I'm not going to go too in depth about this page this is just a place for additional details about your character giving your backstory your height what they look like is a place to put a portrait of your character if you like and it's also an extra place to mark down your equipment uh, there's not a whole lot of space on the equipment section on the first page so this just gives you more room to kind of fill in all that extra stuff so you have more space to work with Next we have the third and final sheet. This is the spell casting sheet for your character. At the top you can mark what class you're playing, so what type of spellcaster you are. Next to that there is your spellcasting ability which will change depending on which class you are. That information can be found in your spellcasting section of your characters, sorry, of your class. Um, so you'll take whatever that is, it's either going to be intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, and you just mark that here as a shorthand so you don't have to try and jump back and forth or open the book to figure out what your class is or what your class's spellcasting ability is. Next to that we have your spell save DC or your spell save difficulty class. This is a target number for an enemy to hit uh, in order to save against your magic. So if they roll a d20 and add their bonuses and their saving throw is less than your spell save DC, then they fail. Whatever happens on a success or a fail will be defined by the spell or the ability that you're using. So next to that we have the spell attack bonus. Whenever you use an attack spell, this is the bonus you're going to add to it to see if you hit against your enemy's armor class. And then finally, below that on the third page, we have the list of your spells. They're separated by level, level zero being cantrips, and then everything above that being your actual level of spells. So you have one through nine, and then you can list the amount of spells that you know, and then track which spells you have prepared on this page as well. All right, there you have it. The character sheet broken down to all of its parts. As I said earlier, I'm going to go into a lot of this stuff more in depth in later videos. This is just a walkthrough of what the sheet is so that whenever you're looking at it, you can kind of realize what piece is what. And it just kind of makes the whole thing a little less overwhelming when you're going into it. All right, if you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions about the character sheet, maybe some stuff that I didn't go into detail here and you want uh, kind of flushed out a bit more, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you want to see more of these videos, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified whenever Fits the Games videos go live, please hit the bell notification. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.